Secretary of Work with Profit Dig. I'm Jeff Spencer with Profit Dig. So Jeff, let's talk about some of the things that a new construction company owner should consider uh, when bidding on a job. Well, there's a lot of things to consider. You know, we're going to go over just a few things, you know, that uh, kind of get everybody's mind in the, in the same path, you know, and, and things that uh, are important to me, you know, to, to utilize uh, my business and make sure that I'm looking out for the best interest of it and, and making sure it's a profitable business. All right. Uh, one thing that I would always, you know, check first and foremost is to make sure that you are bidding on a project that you have the resources and the means to complete. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> uh, if you are awarded this project, you're going to fund it. You know, your portion of the work, you want to buy materials, you want to do payroll and insurance, so on and so forth, you know, so make sure that you're not overstepping your boundaries to where that you don't have enough capital on hand that you can uh, provide this job with the materials and resources that's needed. So if you only have $82 in the bank, you, you should probably not. better look uh, start off a lot smaller. You know? All right. All right. What's something? Uh, next thing you know is uh, most most all projects gonna have better qualifications, you know, and of some sort, you know, to to make sure that your company meets the requirements that they are asking for, you know, whether it be insurance requirements, background checks, uh, depending on what kind of project you're bidding on, you know, make sure that your company is suitable for that project because. Time is money. You don't want to waste your time bidding on a project and find out they can't award it to you because you don't have the, the qualifications to do it. Okay. Uh, another item is, uh, well, it's like we talked about, you know, is make sure you have the right resources and uh, there's always going to be a uh, deadline on the project and, uh, and also a, a, a time to start. You know, you want to make sure that if you already have projects going and the projected start date for this project is two months from bid date, you know, you need to look at your workload and make sure that you have the available equipment, the available men to start that project, you know, in that amount of time. So what, what can happen if you are not able to meet the deadline on the job? Well, if, you know, a lot of times, and most jobs have some sort of liquidated damages, you know, it, Every once in a while you see one with five hundred dollars a day, sometimes a thousand dollars a day, sometimes fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a day. Liquidated damages, and that is for every day that you go past the completion, you know, the projected completion date. And uh, so, you know, that can uh, get in a man's pocketbook pretty quick, and it could possibly put him out of business, if, especially if he's a, a new construction business just getting started. Sounds like it. All right. What's something else? Uh, always know your drawings. You know, know the job. You know, first and foremost. Uh, look at your drawings. You know, if somebody comes up to you and and, and gives you a job to bid and, and say it's out of your county or, or somewhere you're not familiar with, you know, know the ins and outs of that job, of that project. You know, know how you're going to get equipment in and out. Know how you're going to uh, uh, deal with deliveries, uh, get materials on site, off site. Um, you know, and just know your drawings, what they consist of, you know, and, and as far as your scope of work, what you're bidding on, know that you've got everything covered. Can you always get all the information you need from the drawings, or is there ever a need to actually go to the job site? And, and yes, you always need to visit the site, you know, look at, you know, because you've got existing conditions, and, you know, it may be a site that, you know, got some demolition work, you know, it may be an existing site <clears throat> that's going to be tore down and start over, you know, fresh, and, uh, you know, could be, you know, terrain variations, you know, and everything else. You know, you need to need to just study the site. You know, okay. go make a visit. And, All right. What's up then? Uh, well, we talked about a minute ago. You know, about the start date. You know, and, and make sure that you can you can. Uh, uh, that's very important. You know, to make sure that you can, because especially if you're dealing with a new uh, general contractor you never dealt with before, or new city or municipality. You know, you don't want them to have the perception that, hey, your business is going to be here to start work on such and such date, and then you can't make it. You know, I just want to emphasize that again, that you need to, to really pay attention to that and make sure that you can mobilize and start this when they're ready for you. Well, if I, if, if I, if 
I am not able to start on that date, what can I do? Is there any, any, any way? Yeah, there's other things you can do. I mean, you can look at uh, subbing your workout to someone else or hiring another crew and, and renting equipment, you know, to, to make that job happen. But you need to uh, plan for that in your, your bid proposal. Okay. If you know that you can't possibly meet that start date, or the chance you can't, you need to figure on enough money in your bid to cover that. In case you have to sub it out or have to hire someone. Else. So that's going to cost you more money. Yes. To mm -hmm. Perform your part of the job. Exactly. You have to sub it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, then uh, you know you want to look at. It should be available. Most sites, you know, nowadays. <clears throat> have a soils report, a geo report, you know, uh, especially if you're in excavation work or utility work, you want to look at the type of soils you're dealing with, and you know, it may be an unclassified project. If it is, the liability is going to fall on me. Unclassified? <clears throat> what does that mean? Huh? Well, just like whatever the site is, whatever it takes to get it to the proposed uh, site that you're looking at, you know, the finished product. If you got rock, or if you got bad soils, you've got to undercut, ship out, and then you've got to haul good material in to make it work, then you know, you've got to figure that in your price. Uh, and so it's very important to see what kind of soils and stuff you're working with, you know, what your rock levels are, <clears throat> and uh, just make sure that you've got all bases covered and you know, you're not going to be going in the hole right off of that. Well, what if there is no soils report? What do you do then? Well, then you need to exclude. You, know, you need to have qualifications in your bid you know, in your exclusion of qualifications, you know, you need to exclude rock or exclude any unsuitable soils and, uh, you know, just protect yourself. You know, you're, whoever you're bidding to, your GC or whoever you're, you're currently bidding to, they will, uh, they're, they're used to that sort of thing, you know, so they, they know they've got to pick it up somewhere if you exclude it. All right. What's up now? Uh, you need to make sure that you, when you are looking at a job, don't go into it, you know, one or two days, you know, try to put a number together. Make sure you've got ample time, you know, to put together a decent bid for that project that gives you time to study the job, study the site, uh, and just do your homework, you know. Make sure that you know the ins and outs of that project before you ever start. If you get someone that says, you know, hey, I want you to do this project, you know, it bids in two days, uh, I need you to give me a number. You know, you've got to, you know, as bad as you hit to turn down work, you're like, you know, well, I want to do this for you, but, you know, I need seven days or I need ten days, you know, depending on the size of the job. Just make sure that you are, are covered and have enough time to put your bid together. So it's better to pass on a job than it is to try to crunch a bid at the last minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, most definitely, because, you know, if, uh, if you go into a project and you miss something, you know, and it may be something that's, uh, uh, crucial to that project that you miss, you know, and, and it may, you know, have a, a large monetary value to it. And if you miss it, then the GC's not out, the owner's not out, it's you, mm -hmm. you know, the bidder. You're, you're the one that's, that's took liability for it. So it's going to cost you or your insurance company money and could potentially put you out of business. All right. What's something that? Uh, you need to make sure that you know the specifications for this job. You know, you, you may be used to dealing with one area or working in one area. <clears throat> and uh, this may be out of your comfort zone and you know most municipalities and, and uh, codes departments in, in different cities and different counties you know have different specifications for the type of work and what they're looking for you know just make sure that you know the specs for that particular project that you're going to be involved in before you get started you know to make sure you got all your bases covered all right uh, and you know, when you're pricing a project, you've got to have materials to do it. And you need to reach out to your suppliers. You know, don't you may have a good relationship with one supplier or two suppliers, but but whatever, you know, whether it be stone, pipe, you know, storm drainage, you know, whatever materials you're purchasing, you know, don't just base it on one quote, get multiple quotes to where you're getting the best price uh, that's gonna benefit you and help you to get that project. All right. Yes, one more. One more. Uh, there's always changes on drawings. You know, it's uh, kind of like we were talking about, you know, make sure you have ample time to bid it. You know, engineers, they're, most of the time they're on the gun too. You know, they're trying to crank out a project as quick as possible. 
Well, they miss stuff, and then they have to go back, you know, as we as bidders ask questions, then they add addendums. And you know, always make sure that you know how many addendums have been out, make sure you reviewed all of them, and always ask whoever you're bidding to, you know, that you need the latest uh, addendum that's out on this project, make sure you got all your bases covered. All right. So Jeff, why should we listen to you? What do you know about this stuff? Well, I've been doing this now as far as uh, I've been my whole life, since I was, you know, probably 14, 15 years old. And uh, I've been doing this professionally now for probably 15 years. Okay. And, professionally uh, estimating? Estimating and project managing, yes. Okay. All right. And, uh, you know, I've... I've learned lessons the hard way because I didn't have somebody to tell me, you know, what we're what we're trying to help other people avoid. But uh, uh, you know, the old saying is, "I went to school with hard knocks." All right, Jeff, sounds like some good advice there. Appreciate you. You bet, Jerry. Thank you. Y'all check us out online, ProfitDig.com.